In my last Mega 65 video entitled Master the Mega 65 Keyboard, it sparked a lot of conversation afterwards. I knew when I created that video that I would leave out something that the Mega 65 community would want me to add or that I would make mistakes. And in this video, uh, which I'm calling the Master the Mega 65 Keyboard Addendum, I'm going to correct some errors. I'm also going to add some really great tips and tricks that others have shared. I'll give attribution to those tips and tricks by first name. And I also have everything that I discuss in my companion blog post. Check out the video description down below. You're gonna to wanna to check that out for all of the good stuff so that you know how to get the most out of your Mega 65 keyboard. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cover in this addendum. As always, don't forget you can support the channel at buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs like these folks did. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it today, but be sure and check out that link. I think you're gonna enjoy the fun Commodore-inspired membership levels I've created for you and the benefits that come with being a member. Be sure and check those out. Without further ado, let's jump right in and learn how you can boot from different ROMs on your Mega 65 using the keyboard. Now for this trick to work, you have to ensure that you have multiple ROMs on your SD card as I'm showing here using the M65 Connect software. If you look down at the bottom, you'll notice I have one, two, three, four, five different ROM images. If I name the first one Mega65.ROM, that will be the default ROM that loads when we reset or reboot our computer. If I want to add additional ROMs, I can simply put a number from zero to nine at the end of the file name, and then we can boot to those particular ROMs. In this case, I have Mega 65 zero, one, two, three. So I have a grand total of five different ROMs I can load on my Mega 65. Now let's find out how to do that. Now the default ROM obviously boots when we just simply power cycle the computer. Let's go ahead and just do a quick reset. So that's the very first ROM we saw. That's the default ROM. Now if I want to load Mega 65 zero dot ROM. This is where it gets a little tricky. You're not gonna press zero, you're going to press one on the keyboard when you boot the device. Let me show you how this works. I'm gonna power cycle the device, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna hold down the one key and I'm gonna turn it on, wait, let up on the key and Voila, we are in the original Commodore C65 ROM. Wow, that's a shot of nostalgia, isn't it? Check it out. We can now work with the ROM that came with the original C65 or didn't come with the original C65 since it wasn't shipped. But you can play around with that ROM and see what could have been back in the early 1990s. Take a look at that, 1991. Now that's just one ROM that was available for the C65. I've also captured another one on ROM slot number two. So what I'm gonna do is power off, hold two, power on, wait, let up on it. And this was the second C65 ROM that was released. So there are a couple. Where do you get those ROMs? I'm not gonna show you here, but take a look online. You can figure out how to do that. You can download them. Now, if you do want legal copies of the C65 ROMs, thankfully, Cloanto to the rescue. If you buy their C64 Forever Package, the C65 ROMs are now included. Thank you, Cloanta, for supporting our community. So what's on my other two ROM slots? Let me hold three, power up, let up before it boots. And you wanna do that because if you don't and you're holding it down, you're gonna get a string of threes when it boots. You'll find now I have the Mega 65 Open ROM. So now I can quickly switch between the official ROM and the Open ROM. Very cool way to test out various ROMs on your machine. I do have another one on here, but guess what? It's broken. So it's a great example to show you why you might want to keep multiple ROMs. In this case, I find that loading this ROM doesn't work. It just gives me a blue screen. So I don't have to worry because all I have to do is reboot and the original ROM comes up. So it's a great way to test ROMs that you're not sure if they're going to work or not. Now, will that also work with a reset? Let's check it out. Hold down one, 
reset, let up, and there you go. It will also work with a reset. Now for official testing purposes though, make sure you do a power cycle. I think you'll be better off. The next one is shift plus enter. And I wanna thank Def for reminding me of a feature I use all the time, but I didn't include in my original video. And it's a very simple process of allowing you to type some things on the screen, hit return, go to the next line without getting that, that syntax error that occurs. For instance, I could do this. But if I hit enter right now, what happens? Well, I get a syntax error. That's not entirely what I want. So what I can do instead of that is come back up here, type a line, hit shift plus enter or return, and it goes to the next line without producing the syntax error. That's very handy, especially for a YouTuber who wants to share some things across the screen. Thanks to Paul for reminding me of the other use of the help key, which was another feature I use all the time, but for some reason didn't include in the first video. I mentioned in the first video that if you press help, it just simply lists help. And I said it doesn't really do anything else and it would be nice if it did, but for some reason, I forgot there is another use for it. So to show you that, let me load a program. Listening to this program, you'll see that it plays some music. We may as well run it because I'm kind of curious. There we go, there's some music. So how does help work? Well, let's say I was working on that program. Let me go ahead and list it again. And let's go up here and let's say we accidentally put temp instead of tempo. Now, when we run this program, it's going should give us an error, right? We should get a syntax error, and we do. But if I press help, watch what happens. It bounces to the line, the very first line that has a syntax error. So I can bounce back up there. I can do this. I can add for or an O for tempo. I can run it, and there we go. We're back in business. So help will be very helpful when you are in long basic programming sessions. Now this next one I could not have included in the original video because it wasn't a feature, but BitShifter, who has been actively working to develop our ROM and our feature set for our keyboard, heard me say that I wondered why there's this key right here, just the arrow pointing up. Why is that there? It doesn't do anything. It gives you an error. And he got to thinking, hmm, maybe I should do something for retro combs to make that key right there of value. So let's find out what he did. So hopefully you're aware that you can do this command right here. And what that does is loads and runs immediately a program on the disk image. But what if we could shorten those keystrokes to just this? Yes, that's right. BitShifter has remapped this arrow up key to now be the run command on the Mega 65. Thank you, BitShifter, for that. That is great, and it's a great addition to that command there, which loads programs. The next one was from Def. This is one that I was not aware of, but is pretty handy as well. And this one is using the caps locks superpower, as I called it in the original video. The superpower is when you hold the caps lock key down, the Mega 65 will shift to 40 megahertz mode, no matter what mode you're set in the freezer or with the speed command. Def shared that this is also available in C64 mode. Let's check it out and see if it works. So the first thing we need to do is get into 64 mode. Okay, we're in C64 mode. Now what I'm gonna do is load the directory of the disk image. All right, let's go ahead and list that at regular speed. 
And it's pretty long if you remember from our Mega 65 listing, it scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. Now, let's go ahead and list it again, but let's hold the caps lock key to see if 40 megahertz mode kicks in and, and it should list that at a much faster rate. Let's try it. There it was, wow, that was fast. So you see that the caps lock holding it down does activate its what I'm calling superpower and move the speed of the C64 mode to 40 megahertz. That's pretty cool. Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, first of all, that listing uh, was a great example, but let's say you're loading some media, maybe from a legacy device. Will it speed that up? It should, it should load it in and at least give you a little relief from the slower serial line from the older devices. It's also a great way to test your C64 programs that you might be developing or to speed up some of those slower games maybe that are written in basic, just to try them out and see if they would work in 40 megahertz mode. Now my apologies for this next one. Someone shared it with me and I failed to note who did that. And so again, if you remember that you were the one that sent me this tip, or correction, uh, just let me know in the video comments below and I will update the companion blog post that's also available for this video. But the next one deals with Mega 65 window mode. If you may remember that some of the computers, the Plus 4, the 128, and the C65 and Mega 65 had something known as a window mode. Let me show you how that works and remind you of that first. So I'm gonna go move my cursor somewhere here and I am going to hit escape and T. And that's gonna set the upper left hand corner of the window. What do I mean by that? Well, if I do directory, you'll see that now everything is within that area. Now, if you go back to my original video, you'll know that you can also set the lower right. We're not going to do that. But one of the things I said was, you can exit out of that easily by hitting Run Stop Restore. Now the problem with Run Stop Restore is when we do that, this happens. So it clears the screen completely. What if we didn't want to clear the screen completely? Well, let me get back to where we were. So the tip is, without hitting Run Stop Restore, you can press the Home button twice. That will once again exit out of window mode and give you your normal margins. Thank you to whoever shared that with me and please let me know, again, my apologies. Now Dan came in with this next tip and it is a doozy and it's around those function keys. And as I got to digging in, I even came up with a few more things that I probably should have mentioned that didn't mention. So this one is a little bit longer than the rest, but it also has the potential to be one of the most useful things I share with you in my previous video and this video, and that is the use of the function keys. Let's dig into that one. In the original video, I just kind of went through and I showed you what the function keys do, right? And I pressed them all and I showed them to you and I went back and I did this and this and then I did a couple of these and this and I showed you what all of those things do. But Dan suggested I need to dive in a little bit deeper and show you what it all means and how you can modify those function keys for your usage. And that all begins first with a command called the key command. Now let me go ahead and clear home and I'm going to type key. After we type key, you'll see it lists all of the assignments for the function keys from one through 14. What's 15 and 16? Well, 15 is help and 16 is just the shift help. So one of the questions I had was, why is it that when I press a key, for instance, like F6, which is shift F5, does it just list key six? Dan suggests that that's getting us ready for this feature right here, which is being able to configure these function keys to do their own thing or what I want them to do. So now if I hit shift F6, look what happens. It prints retro combs. So that's why it only lists key six so that I can go and modify it. He also suggests that I might wanna go back up here and from here we can start to make modifications to all of these by simply changing the particular entry. So for instance, if I wanted to change key six, I could come in here and let's say that is right here, retro combs. And I hit return. 
Then again, when I type Shift F6, I'm going to get retro combs. So that listing is a quick way to go back and make a modification or modify all of them to your heart's content to have those function keys do the things that you want to do. Now let me go back up here and relist these function keys for you. I want you to note some of the things that you're going to see. For instance, key one, it says cursor number 27 plus X. So when I press F1, what is actually happening? You can see it here in this line. Key one or function one is entering a character string 27 and an X, which character string 27 is the escape key and an X. So what does escape X do? Well, let's find out. Escape X. Now maybe you don't want F1 to be 40, 80 column mode because you know that you can hit Escape X and you already have that feature built into the keyboard. You can make F1 be anything that you want now. So I can type key, one, comma, and here's my retro combs. And now when I hit F1, it's assigned as retro combs. So what are some of the other character strings that you see here? Character string 13 is a return Character string 34 is a double quote. And the reason that's in here is because you can't put a double quote within a quote. And then the last one we have down here is for function key 10, and that is a character string 141, which is a line feed, which means it enters the land but does not parse the command. So for instance, on my example up here, you'll notice that every time we hit F1, watch what happens. If I hit return, Obviously, I get a syntax error, but what if I just want that to be on the line by itself? I can come back up here to number one. I can add a character string number 141. Press enter, so you're seeing how I can use that listing to make some quick modifications. I'll come down here to an empty area. I'll hit F1, and you'll notice it entered retro combs and then went to the next line without parsing it and without the syntax error. That's kind of handy. That's pretty cool. I might keep that one. So the problem with this is that when you reboot or reset your Omega 65, you're going to lose all of those function key assignments. So the question you probably have for me is, hey, retro combs, is there a way that I can set those assignments so that they're sort of permanent? Now, we don't have a way to write those into the ROM unless you're bit shifter in which he can make them say anything he wants. But as a user, there is a way we can do it. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but I'm going to give you just a hint, just a just a little tease to make you explore on your own how to do this. And it all starts with an auto boot.c65 file. Let me show that to you. All right, you'll see here at the very bottom, I have this file called auto boot. Now this file right now does not have the .c65 extension on the end of it. And I've done that so that I can simply reboot and the Mega 65 comes up pure and clean, the way the Mega 65 developers intended. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load that file for you. So let me go ahead and let's just do this the easy way. All right, here's that program. Let's go ahead and add a new line. Let's say key one comma, open. Let's do retro combs, close. We wanna add the CHR character string 141 so that we get the line feed afterwards. We hit enter. Now let's go ahead and list this and see that that is in there and it is. Now let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type save and I'm going to call this auto boot.c65 and close those quotations, hit enter. Now if we pull up my directory, all right, you'll notice that it's not there. Where is it? Well, it's actually there. It's just that that listing is so long, we need to narrow our, our list down. So let's go ahead and, and do some wildcard action here. And let's do uh, AU and an asterisk. And that will list all the files that begin with AU. And you'll see it is there. So now we have the autoboot.c65 program. Now the big test is let's reset our computer. 
Mega 65 is rebooting. You'll notice it changed colors and all of those colors are specified in that auto boot.c65. But you remember we added the feature for the function key one to print retro combs, the big test. Drum roll, please. There it is. So we can now have our function keys all assigned when the Mega 65 boots. That's how you do it. All right, Dan provided this last tip for us and it is a potential lifesaver if you are programming in basic. Let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to load a program. Let's go up here and load the viewport program. It's a fun little program. And I'm sitting here and let's go ahead and list the contents of that file. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun and I'm working on it and it's taken me forever to figure this file out and I run it and then uh, I hit escape. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, I decide to hit the reset key. And then I think to myself, oh no, I hit the reset key. That program is now gone, right? Is it? Is it really? Well, according to Dan, it is not. But I just hit reset. If I list, there's nothing there. Dan, what are you talking about, sir? Well, what he is saying is, try this, retro combs. When that occurs, type new and then restore. Okay, let's see what happens. Doesn't look like anything happened, but if we type list, what happens? Wow, check it out. So our program comes back. So what happens is, the basic program, the way I understand it, is stored in attic RAM and a reset will not completely wipe that from the attic RAM in the Mega 65. So new restore is a way to pull that back. Now it's important to note, if you're using that auto boot.c65, this will not work because that auto boot.c65 will come back in, load and rewrite the memory contents. So there you go. There are some additional tips so that you can become a Mega 65 keyboard master. What I missed, leave it in the comments below. Hey, while you're down there, make sure you hit all those buttons, like, subscribe, support, and that little thanks button's always appreciated as well. Hey, if you missed the very first video, it is right here, so make sure you click there. And if you'd like to know some other cool things that you can do with your Mega 65, that's right here. So check those out as well. So thank you for watching Retro Combs out.